I'm with Samuel Presgraves in the QD Laser booth, and he's got a small Sony camera with something hooked to it and a pair of goggle sort of things. And I gotta, I gotta ask, what, what are we looking at here? So what we're looking at uh, is uh, technology from QD Laser. We're a Japanese-based company, and we focus on assistive eyewear technologies. Uh, what specifically you're looking at here, uh, for the example of the Sony digital camera, is we have an attachment that allows people with low vision or potentially no vision according to a doctor. And I will get to an actual story from yesterday that kind of hits on that. Uh, but it attaches to a digital camera and allows them to actually see the image that they wanted to be taken a picture of. Uh, oh, this is to take a photo or to so be able to see? This is to be able to see. Uh, when you said the wearable, I'll also transition to that in a moment. But this allows someone that might have been a photographer before or had those childhood images of my hometown. And we actually have a demo video that's playing right now. This gentleman is from Okinawa. He lost his sight when he was a child and his mother was devastated. He'll never be able to see again. So when he found our technology, he took a trip on his own back to Okinawa to see his childhood sights. Okay, well let, let's, let's move away from the anecdotes to uh, how is it possible if you can't see yes. that this allows you to see. Absolutely, so that is the in-house developed uh, Sugawara san is our president, uh, wonderful engineer. He came up with a technology using a laser, a uh, wide beam, wide field laser, directly projected onto the retina. So you so, require a healthy retina, but you could have uh, it doesn't what have to kind be of damage? An entirely healthy retina. We do need a healthy optical nerve and at least a portion of the retina still functional. So, okay. you know, if we look at it, if it was a rectangle, you could say the top half could be completely gone, but the bottom half is still functional. What about the center, like with uh, macular degeneration? That works perfectly with the digital camera attachment here because we can take advantage of the optical zoom. So even if the dead center is blurred out, you can zoom out and you'll still see everything that was originally in your center of focus. Oh, interesting. Okay. <clears throat> also with this camera, uh, for someone like me, I have 20-20 vision, so I'm not a low vision person. But how do I know that this works? When I look through this, my peripherals are now in focus when a typical healthy eye your focus is what's in focus. Your peripherals are always kind of hazy or blurry. So it's, it's got a, a deep depth of field. Absolutely. Uh, right now, this model has a 60 degree field of view. And in that entire 60 degrees, we are in focus. So basically, there's no bokeh. Like, I'm looking at you right now. You're in focus, but everything in the background is out of correct. focus. With this, everything would be in focus. That is absolutely correct. And then you, if, if part of the retina is damaged, like you said, if the bottom left quadrant is, was damaged, it's going to focus it all on the, all of the information on the other three quarters? Correct. So it's we don't know what in the retina is what's damaged. We project over the entire surface area, 100%, even if it's damaged. So by getting that entire image constantly using the MEM scanner, it's going to constantly be drawing that picture over the entire surface, filling in all of those gaps for you. Now, most people think shooting a laser into your eye is a bad idea. <laughs> Absolutely. When I first heard that, I said the same thing. I said, wait, wait, wait. Every laser pointer I pick up says, do not point at eyes. Uh, our laser is actually lower power than the lights that we're standing under right now. We are classified as a class one, not a dangerous device. And we've been rated uh, through a clinical trial in the EU that took place over almost an entire year where they said this is safe for everyday use and its intended purpose. Okay, great. I, I think uh, this gentleman here, uh, Eric, quoted the uh, how many watts or milli microwatts. Yeah, uh, it's less than 1.6 microwatts of power. And that's considered safe for straight that in is. the eye. Okay, great. Because we've had a so, lot of people. I'm going to actually move to our wearable because this kind of fits into a better scenario. The, the camera is great for portability. You know, you can take those images, take the Actually pictures, taking photos. Be a photographer even if a doctor declared you blind. Uh, actually, a case of yesterday, we had a disabled war veteran came in. His doctor said, you'll never see out of your left eye again. His right eye was at about 40%. And he said, can I try it? I said, Absolutely. That's why we're here. So he holds the camera up to his right eye. And he goes, oh, my God, I can see everything. He could actually see the entire room. He was sitting and playing with a Zoom. And he goes, but I wonder. And he put it over his left eye. And he goes, oh, my God, I can actually see something. Do you know what kind of damage he had? Uh, it was, I believe it was a, uh, a brain damage that caused actual, uh, like to his visionary center. Interesting, so he was interesting. In a war, he got hit with uh, a concussion blast. So 
to me, yeah, we don't. I just don't want to promise everybody will be able to see you magically. Correct. And but. that's what we kind of get to when we interview people as well. We're first questions we're asking is what is the disability or the impairment you have because complete blindness is not something we can just fix yeah. and this isn't yeah. a corrective technology it's an assistive so okay. we're trying to assist low vision so what you have making it actually work to to actually bring images okay Correct. let's take a look at the headset here sure and you're gonna have to put let me put this on you absolutely know. so it's a much tighter beam but a lot of people assume let's this is describe a smart it because remember it's an audio podcast as well so yes. it's it basically looks like a set of glasses frames that are gone from the bottom but go over the top and a little camera mount goes in front of your correct. eye correct and we do have an attachment that goes in here to make it look like sunglasses if that's what you like uh, just to have that appearance level so it doesn't have quite the google glass or smart glasses yeah, you don't want to be thinking you're you're a google person there you go okay yeah yeah, so any of those smart glasses usually have this, but this is not a smart glass technology. It is a low vision assistive technology. Okay, we're putting it on me while yes. you talk, okay? You're gonna have to hold the mic right up to your mouth. Here. Okay, that I can do. And I will hold this battery pack for you. So everything that you are wearing, and I will actually hand you this, you are now wearing our entire technology. So I'm, I'm holding something about the size of a, maybe a big, thick iPhone. Yeah. Uh, it's, got, it's got a battery pack in it, and it's got a USB controller there, go, or, Input? Yeah, so it's okay. kind of everything, the laser drivers and everything kind of power through what you're looking at. I will tell you one thing, you haven't given it to people who have eyelashes. <laughs> My eyelashes are hitting on the inside. It, it's very precise, so we are working on a way to try and make it so when you just stick it on your face, it's right there where it needs to be. Right now, you kind of notice you have a little adjustment. We've got the adjustment screws up on the top to kind of get the angle perfect for your eye. So each person would have that custom ability. So this is much more high contrast than looking through the camera. So Correct. I see it, like dark things are super dark, bright is super bright. Yes. And so the intent for this is take the example of being in a classroom or even here in a seminar, you want to take notes and you want to be able to see at the same time. Right. Well, if you have low vision, it's going to be hard to, if you have glasses or some other technology, you normally have to hold that and then put it down to write your note. Good point. Yeah, yeah. Having this as a wearable, you could now just look up and look down between a person's face, uh, a notepad that you're writing on, or your other, you know, a cell phone, it's, tablet. It's zoomed up quite a bit as well. So right here on the side, oh, you I have a zoom, zoom wheel. Oh. You just click up and click down okay. for your different zoom All in right. and out. Let me try this. Uh, okay, I'm trying it. I don't know if I'm doing it right, but that's okay. You should that's be. Okay. So it's, for, it's for audio here. It's set for just down, down, down. So it's that one click for. back. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. All right. There I'm we being, go. I'm Is it going? At, yeah. Okay. It's also interesting to be seeing that out of one eye and my regular vision out of the it other is. eye. It is. And we do have this available for both eyes. Right oh, now we okay. just have a single eye configuration, but you would just have a second device on the left side if you needed both eyes assisted. All right, you just gotta adjust for those eyelashes and I think you've got a real, a real product here. <laughs> Noted. Great for guys, not so much for women, long lashes, or maybe, maybe even a guy like myself, long eyelashes. There you go, yeah, see, I didn't joke gender specific there. Yeah, absolutely. All right, this is really cool. So if people wanted to learn more about QD Laser, where would they go, Samuel? So we have QDLaser.com, kept it nice and simple for everybody. Nice. We do have a QR code, which I can give you this if they wanna do a screenshot during the video feed or something, but please take that information. Uh, one of the best things, if you really want something moving that is a real life testimonial, we did a campaign in Japan called With My Eyes. Highly recommend, look at that on YouTube. It's a, about a half an hour presentation of different people who have used our technology to take actual photos. And these are people who had less than 0 .03 vision and just, oh my God, I'm now taking panoramic photos that are in art museums. And That's that mentality, amazing, it's, yeah. So how much is the cutie laser that attaches to the camera? So right now the camera attachment is not available for sale. Okay. We're gonna be opening up the pre-orders and registrations this summer and we'll be shipping within six months of that closing. Okay, the all right. The wearable technology is available now. We just launched our e-commerce web store, so on qdlaser.com you'll find the information to order the wearables now. Great. Well, this has been very interesting. Thank you very much, Samuel. Absolutely, thank you.